Hi, first graders. We are on Knowledge 8, Lesson 4, Animals of the East African Savanna Habitat. Our first vocabulary word is coexist. Say coexist. Coexist means to live together peacefully. The next word is predator. Say predator. Predators are animals that hunt and kill other animals. And the last one is prey. Say prey. Prey are animals that are hunted by other animals. Rattenboro, your fearless adventurer here to show you something a little different. We've been talking about habitats, the places where plants and animals live, and we've spent time in three of the most extreme habitats in the world. The freezing Arctic tundra, the Arctic Ocean, and the scorching Sonoran Desert. Now I've come to a habitat that should be of great interest to you. Some of the most famous animals in the world live here. Welcome to the East African Savannah. Savannah is another name for grassland, a wide open, vast stretch of grass covered land. You know you're in grassland when there's a lot of grass around you, but not many trees or bushes. The East African Savannah has very warm weather all year round. However, it only has two seasons, the rainy summer and the dry winter. The plants and animals that live here have had to adapt to these two very different types of weather in the summer and winter. Luckily, I brought my umbrella in case it starts to pour. Boy, I can barely see a thing in all this grass. There's so much of it. As the name grassland suggests, grass is the most important plant growing in the savannas. The grasses are very hardy, which means they can survive the tough conditions of their habitat. Long spells of dry, hot weather, as well as heavy rainfall and flooding. The grass has adapted to these conditions by growing very deep roots. Even if the grass above the ground is destroyed, the roots underground survive and the grass can grow back. The grass grows very quickly, as much as an inch per day. The grass in your backyard might take a whole week to grow an inch. Yikes, I'm surrounded by hooves. That's because grass is food for many of the larger animals like elephants, zebras, gazelles, and antelope. They chew on grass all day long. I don't think grass is all that tasty to tell the truth, but these animals depend on the nutrients in the grass to survive. It's all they need to eat. It would seem that because so many animals eat the grass in the savanna every day, there wouldn't be very much grass left after a while. But remember that the grass grows back very quickly, so there's usually plenty for the different herbivores like antelopes and zebras to eat. Grass is not the only important source of food in the savanna. Many animals get their meals from the acacia tree. Giraffes with their long necks and tongues are able to eat twigs and leaves from the top of the acacia. Not only are giraffes' tongues long, they're also very tough. It's a good thing too because the twigs of these trees are covered with sharp thorns that the giraffe eat along with the twigs and leaves. Elephants eat grass and they also like the acacias too. They rest in the shade and they eat the leaves, branches, and seeds. They even like to strip off the bark and chew on that too. I think this acacia tree might be great to climb and get a better look at the savanna. But don't forget that it's covered with prickly thorns. Ouch! Acacias have adapted well to their habitats. They have small leaves that don't dry out as quickly as larger leaves would dry in the hot months. The roots of the tree grow very deep into the ground, which allows them to collect water from far underground where there, when there is not much rainfall. And their sharp thorns help keep some animals from eating too many of the branches. These trees are right at home in this habitat. Animals living in the savanna have adapted to their habitat in many different ways. Some animals, like the giraffe, have a long, powerful legs so that they can quickly run away from predators or animals that hunt and kill other animals. Their long legs also help them travel long distances searching for food. Can you imagine a rat like me keeping up with a giraffe or a zebra? Not a chance. Now, there's a little bird that has been sitting on this giraffe the whole time I've been watching. This is a oxpecker. Oxpeckers perch on the back of large animals. This oxpecker will use its sharp claws to hold on to the giraffe, who will hardly even know it is there. 
The giraffe and the oxpecker coexist. This is when two animals live together peacefully. The oxpecker feeds on the fleas and ticks that live on the giraffe's body and warns the giraffe of any predators that might be trying to sneak up on it. In turn, the giraffe will let the oxpecker live on its back and provide the oxpecker food, the fleas and ticks, shelter, and protection from predators. The oxpecker will spend most of his life on the giraffe's back. What a partnership. So here I am, back in all this tall grass, and I bet you recognize the black and white stripes of the zebra I've just run into. Zebras are specially adapted to living in the savanna. They have strong, long legs that make them very good at outrunning lions and other predators. And the stripes on the zebra's legs and body don't just make it look pretty, they camouflage the zebra against the grass so that predators can't see it. Zebras eat the grass on the savanna, so they are herbivores. Over there, I can see the largest land animal in the world. Can you guess what it is? This African elephant is very big and eats up to 400 pounds of trees and grasses every single day. That's about the same amount as the weight of nine first graders. African elephants are adapted to the hot weather in the savanna. They have huge ears. They flap like fans to stay cool and keep away bugs. They also have thick skin that protects them from branches and thorns. Do you see the trunk on that elephant? An elephant uses its trunk for all sorts of things. The trunk is, of course, the elephant's nose for breathing and smelling, but the trunk is also used like a hand for lifting things, gathering food, and even holding on to the elephant, other elephant's little tails. Baby elephants or calves use their tusks to grasp other elephants' tails to keep them from wandering away from the rest of the herd and from getting lost. Elephants also use their trunks to drink water. They suck up the water with their trunks and then put the water from the trunk into their mouths. They also use their trunks like a hose for showers and playtime. These animals are lions. Lions live in groups called prides. The female or lioness do most of the hunting. They are carnivores that hunt zebras, elephants, and all kinds of other savanna animals. Most groups of lions have just one or two male lions. The male lion is huge and incredibly strong. It has a furry mane, powerful jaws, and fearsome claws. Unless this lion meets a stronger lion, no other animal in the savanna habitat can match the lion's strength and power. Animals that are hunted by predators are called prey. One of the lion's favorite prey to hunt and eat are zebras. Zebras try to use the camouflage of their stripes to hide in the grasses of the savanna so that the lions will not see them. Up at the top of this tree, I can see and hear birds that are waiting for the lions to finish eating so they can have a turn at dinner. These birds are called vultures. A vulture is a scavenger, which, as you have learned, is an animal that eats leftovers. All of the animals you have learned about so far are part of something that we call the food chain, which is illustrated in this image. What do you see in the bottom of the picture? It is the savanna grass. The arrow points from the savanna grass to the zebra because the zebra eats the grass. The next arrow points from the zebra to the lion because, you guessed it, the lion eats the zebra. The next picture after the lion is a picture of the soil because eventually the lion dies and its body becomes a part of the soil. Then more grass grows out of the soil and that starts the food chain all over again. Next, I think we should head to a habitat that's a bit closer to home and explore some plants and animals that might look quite familiar to us. But for now, I'm going to check out more wildlife. I will see you later. The end. You may now go ahead and click on the Google form to answer the questions about today's read aloud.